Welcome back, people of everywhere. Guess what? It's not October anymore. I'm a failure. No, I was not able to get every movie into the month of October. If I've learned anything from this, it's that I need to better schedule my reviews and not pick a franchise with so many damn movies in it. But we will continue our way through the franchise because I just got to get through this thing. We are now at Friday the 13th, Part 7, New Blood. In Part 7, we get a girl named Tina who has miraculous telepathic powers. And she blames herself for the death of her father when she was a child. Mostly because it is her fault. But now, at 17 years old, her mother brings her back to the site of the accident, along with her doctor who has apparently been helping her in a mental hospital. But thinking that she's reaching out to her father with her psychic powers, she accidentally awakens Jason, who has been under the lake all of this time ever since Tommy Jarvis trapped him there. First, bad acting. Everywhere. People are either overacting, underacting, or plainly badly acting. There are characters that are introduced simply to kill them off. I usually don't mind when this happens, especially when the kills are good. But they're not. I know I said in the last review that the kills in that, while they weren't plainly shown, were still good because the After Effects makeup looked good and the movie itself was enjoyable. So, while you don't see the kills in this one either, the After Effects don't look very good and the movie takes itself much more seriously than the last one did, which made it not as enjoyable. When I say the after effects are bad, I'm serious. There is a shot where there is a severed head. And it looks like they just ripped it off a mannequin and put stage blood on it. It's really bad. And something else that is going to sound kind of nitpicky, but it's something I noticed, is that Jason uses a lot of different weapons in this movie. And really only uses them once. To give bad kills. A couple out in the woods are introduced simply so Jason can get his machete. That's fine because that's what the whole purpose of the paintball scene was in the last one. But Jason only uses the machete on the girl in the couple in the woods. He uses it one time and then it's gone. The next time he kills someone it is not with the machete. Where did the machete go? I don't know. He also uses this, like a, a weed hacker thing. And when I saw that, I was like, that's going to be rad. But no. It looks like he just barely taps it in against the guy. Then he dies. And then we never see the weed hacker again. Come on. Now that isn't to say that there isn't any enjoyment at all in this movie. The two leads actually worked really well together and gave some decent performances. The mother and the doctor also gave decent performances. And begrudgingly, I will also say that Melissa did too. Melissa is a character that you hate through the whole movie. She does nothing but stir up trouble and be an insensitive wretch through the whole thing. The worst part? She's the last one to die. The last one! And guess what? It's not a good kill either! Oh god, I gotta calm down. Whoo. Positives? We're on the positives. One thing that I found incredibly enjoyable was Jason himself. Played this time by the man, the myth, the legend, Kane Hodder. Many people actually hail Kane Hodder as being the definitive Jason Voorhees. And I will say, 
He's the only one whose name I can remember. But he does just give this presence to Jason. It's really hard to explain. You just kind of have to see it. He's more menacing than the others, I think. Something else that really benefits his performance is that he is a stuntman. So almost everything that you see him do in this movie, he is doing himself. Something else that I really enjoyed was the showdown between Tina the Psychic and Jason the Murderous Zombie. It was cool to see a character that was actually able to go head to head with Jason. Whether she was wrapping him up in trees all evil dead style and electrocuting him or setting him on fire, it was really good to see. It was fun. So I would say that this movie actually has a pretty balanced ratio of good and enjoyable things and bad things. So I'm going to give Friday the 13th Part 7, New Blood, Lord, these titles are getting long, a C+. So before I let you guys go, I have something really excited to tell you. My friends over at the newly founded Good Shag Productions just released their first short horror film called 103117. It's only about eight minutes long, so it's a real easy watch. And I was able to show up for one of the days of shooting and watching them work was really exciting. Even though we're all just around the same age, everyone was super professional, there was a good atmosphere about it, and the editing, the sound design, the music, it all flows incredibly well. And if I do have to say, the blood effects were probably the best part of all of it. Okay, yeah. Seriously though, I highly suggest you check it out. I will put the link to Good Shag Productions YouTube channel in the description. Be sure to check them out and give them a subscribe. Thank you all so much for watching and don't forget to hit the like and my subscribe so that I can see you next time for more R&R. &R.